But what's hard is going, yo, yesterday I got nothing from working as hard as I could. Nothing happened from that. I'm going to do the same thing again today, but I'm going to try to go harder. That's the hardest thing in the world, mm -hmm. to get up every day and give 100% and, and be in the same position that you were each day, but mentally know that you're trying and trying and trying. That's a real grind. So we grabbed this water pump from uh, Randy Haywood. This is the one we got. So we got to figure out these fitting sizes this afternoon. I think he said they were dash 16, uh, but we need to figure these out so we can make sure that we get these ordered and on the way. Um, confirm that, but that's going to be our Davis Craig water pump. It's a EW p150 uh so hopefully it's pretty good he said it, that's what they were using and he had the bracket with it and everything so i think for 100 bucks is what i got it for used i think it was a pretty good deal i feel that was pretty pretty fair so here is our coolant hoses that we were waiting on so this is what we're going to use for the radiator okay and we're actually waiting on some other stuff too but this is a whole box of the um heater hose so let's see here this is what it's gonna be I'm guessing that's gonna be a part number heater hose um radiator hose it's ready for like 350 degrees um so this our hose what we can do now that we have the hose is we can start um kind of seeing how it wants to lay out how it wants to map out uh that's what i was waiting for is to kind of see how it bends you don't really i don't really want to kink it i understand that when water goes in it and it heats up that it will start to uh take shape you know how it how it needs to be but i kind of wanted it for order the fittings to see how they were going to fall so now that we have them um we can figure out what fittings we need and we can go ahead and get some dash 16 uh fittings but right now i want to confirm where we're going to mount the water pump make sure it's not going to need um anything crazy and um that way we can move forward with uh, uh this weekend putting you know all the the sheet metal in and stuff like that the fill cap on the radiator i wasn't going to do anything with the fill cap i was going to leave it like that and just pump the water in there till it's right at the top of the radiator but i may change the fill cap i just don't know if i feel like having somebody weld uh, I really need to get a welder and learn how to weld. Um, but that way, you know, the fill cap could come up. But again, I don't know if I want to uh, do that or just deal with filling it like that. So we are working on the water pump and I was going to mount it off the bottom of the radiator. So what a lot of people do is they'll mount it to the actual the bottom of the radiator and we could do that, but then it hangs too low. So if you kind of see from the back of the car, if we put a radiator or a water pump here, like it would just be, it would just be too low. It just hangs too low. Um, being the radiators already, as you can see, you know, the fan's down pretty low. I mean, the freaking bottom valence of the car hits about right here in the center. So this is already low. And then if you're gonna stack another water pump down here, like it just looks tacky, it looks terrible. And I'm not for anything that looks terrible. So I was gonna mount it all up in here, but then pretty much um, I can't figure out any way that I'm happy with the way it looks um, and that it doesn't look tacky. And I hate it being behind the tire because then it just gets all of this rubber and glue and everything all over it. I'm trying to avoid that also. Um, I want it down low. I don't want it higher than the radiator because then I'm afraid that obviously it will have a hard time um, priming and actually pushing, uh, pushing water. So I think we're going to mount it up front. Now in your car, it don't really technically matter where you mount the radiator at because of course it's just a giant loop. So the water system, you know, is going through the radiator and it's going through the motor and it's just looping in one big circle. So technically you could put the water pump, um, or if I said radiator, you could put the water pump, that's what we're talking about. You could put the water pump anywhere you wanted and you should be fined, uh, fine. Now we're gonna put it on the, uh, lower radiator hose uh, line. We're not going to put it on the uppers. So we're going to put it on the lower. That's the one it's supposed to be on, um, which is the cool water side of the radiator. The heat, the hot water comes in the top of the radiator. And then as it cools, it goes to the bottom and comes out the bottom. So our cool side of our radiator is this line right here. This is the cool one. And then the hots are going to be right here. All right. So right now 
we have this whole side tore off and I actually didn't need to tear the side off. But again, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So we've come out of here with this line finally. So if you've been around on the channel for a little while, you remember I, you may remember I bought this line and I never could have used that line. Uh, it never worked for absolutely anything. It finally worked for something. So that's the reason why it's so nice to have uh, different lines around. But that's just a dash 20 coming straight out the engine. And then it is going to go right here to our uh, water pump like that. So uh, this is a side that pulls off the radiator. So the radiator flows this way. It flows into the pump, slings it around, and then it comes out. And then it goes into the engine to cool uh, the cool water. So we're waiting for our fitting to hook this one up. Uh, that's going to be a 16 ORB to a 20. And we went ahead and put our 16 ORB to 16 uh, flare on this one because we are ready to start shooting water lines. Now, if you've noticed how I've got everything this kind of laid out is this thing should curve up and hit right here. Whereas these right here are also our water lines and they should hit right there. So I've got it laid up so that they can tie in together and meet up and then roll side by side all the way to the back of the car. Uh, that way they're not scattered all over the place. Um, so some of y'all might be new here and you've never seen this car tore apart this front end comes right off really easy uh, just a couple bolts uh, you don't remove it like a one piece but you can break it down uh within literally if if this thing pulled into the pits we could have the front end off in 15 minutes all the grills fenders air, air bumpers everything will come off the front it's designed to come off extremely easy but not be taken off between rounds if that makes sense we pulled the wire out because we didn't need it but now we're going back and putting it back in here so this is was our fan wire for our fan but now this is going to be a water pump wire so as you can see we're right here together so we'll cut this one back we'll put a Deutsch connector on it and make it nice and neat uh, where it goes right here to the top of the frame rail um, and then that will be good to go so our water pump has power and yeah it's good to go let's see here the water pump we were going to put it underneath the back like I said but hanging down too low I just couldn't do it so I think it worked out fine. It's not exactly um, where I would put it if I was building lines. So if I was plumbing the car, then I would definitely put it somewhere else. But being the Dash 20s are pretty expensive, and I'm trying to use what I got. Um, I think that this will work, um, obviously, and that it doesn't look too terribly bad at all with the two pieces sitting over here. Now to mount all these things up, uh, you know, I was able just to flip my oil filter and all that because of how I've preached a hundred times not to weld tabs to your chassis uh, to buy clamps and build clamps that way you can move stuff so our um, filters you know they just unbolt they have these go lizard um, let's see here lizard go brackets you can look them up basically for light bars LED light bars for pickup trucks and stuff but you can get them in all sorts of different sizes and they have rubber insulators that uh, take up some of the slack and they're just absolutely freaking amazing for uh mounting stuff on a race car, moving stuff around. So that's what we were able to do over here is with our water pump, we were able to use the bracket that come on it and then put us a, a Lizard Go um, bracket, you know, clamp that on the roll bar right there and then just bolt that thing down through the top and then that that's it. What we're gonna do here is we'll come in here with a hose clamp and we'll catch across this into the, the frame and that thing will go absolutely nowhere. It won't be the, the greatest looking thing uh, or we use a big zip tie, but it's it's not gonna go nowhere. Um, and I, you know, we're good to go there. We'll come over here, since our lines are gonna come off here, we ordered a 2-12Y to a single 16. So we're gonna be pulling a 16 here and then pulling a 16 here. They'll double up we're gonna hit this frame rail. We're gonna hit this frame rail running. So we're gonna pull the double lines up on the inside of this frame rail and that will keep them out of the way of the engine. And then that will also allow us that if, you know, something happens to the car or whatever, we have to take the engine out, we can just unbolt them right here and then just drop them straight to the ground. And they'll literally just hang right here in a drain bucket or whatever, and they'll be good to go. And we're gonna secure them to this tube. And then we're gonna hit these two holes that I just put in here with the, uh, with the hole saw and they just go underneath the dash inside inside the um inside the car uh we had the coolant overflow tank here uh for the radiator i have pulled that off now got all the lines off the frame rail and everything got all that removed uh, got it all the way removed to the back axle all we got to do now is put the overflow in the trunk and hook that up and then we're set coming inside the car we have pulled the seat out and 
you go underneath the dash, you'll see our two holes right there that we're hitting up top. So them are holes that we're hitting up top and the coolant lines will come down right here in the foot well and then we will um, roll them together and then they'll come right up beside this bar. So for a coolant line, uh, that is how it's gonna run through. And you've got to put something around there, a piece of rubber to protect it, okay? So you can see I got this little piece around here. What I'm using, this is actually something I had left over, I think, from some dually fender flares. It's basically a door edge protector. You can get all kinds of edge protector, rubber edge uh, protector, whatever, off Amazon, eBay, if you search them keywords. Um, I got a couple different ones. Got some that we used on other stuff that has like 3M sticky tape inside of it. You can see the red stuff, and then one side is shiny. Um, so there's, there's different options out there. If you don't have any of that, you can also just take you a hose, um, you know, a small hook line or hose and cut it long ways with a razor blade and make a slit of it. But you got to put something on there. Um, it's, it's hard to get on there if you don't, um, if you don't kind of know a trick. So I'm going to show you a trick real fast. So you're going to take your, your line. Okay. And you're going to open it up like that, or your door edge protector. And we're gonna fold this thing open like this. Okay, so we're gonna fold this thing backwards so that it opens. Um, and it is really hard. Like it really wants to go back to how it's supposed to be. But you're gonna take it and you're just gonna keep rolling it up and opening it up. As long as you keep this thing bent backwards like this, it will naturally stay open okay so you can see how that's kind of rolled up um like that okay and you'll just make sure you have plenty rolled backwards and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to your to our hole we're going to have it like that and we're going to stick it in this side I'm trying to show y'all it is really hard but you're gonna start just like that and you're gonna slip that side in and then you're just gonna walk it in almost like a screw and then it will literally fold around on itself. Now you're gonna have this pigtail left over because I just cut mine long. You just kind of go a little past, okay, where your piece overlaps and you'll come over here and you'll just kind of cut it. You'll cut it kind of close and then you'll, over, you'll open that up and you'll overlap it on itself. So whenever it comes back around, you'll basically be overlapping it on itself and normally you'll be okay. Now, if you went too far, you need to just pull that back out, snip a little bit more and try to get it close. But you'd rather have just a little bit of overlap than, you know, have a gap like that and the hose works up in there and cuts itself on, um, on the edge. So that's kind of how I do the uh, door edge protectors in a real nice tight hole. Uh, you know, you can rub, you can order different things but this stuff, if you'll just go ahead and order you a roll of it, you can use it for all kinds of edges and all kinds of stuff. Like we'll put this stuff around um, possibly some of the panels in the trunk uh, when we go do it. We've done that in the past to clean up the edges. We did that, if you remember, on the carbon fiber in the dash under the car. But that's basically, you know, you want it to be folded like that, stick it in the hole, and then let it kind of open up and cut it really happy uh, i'll probably cut a dozen zip ties off changing things really happy with how uh they flowed out up here took a little fault took a little changing up we utilize this bracket uh so this is a light bar bracket it's adjustable light bar bracket a uh, little tip when you're doing when you want to add brackets all of your tubes search for light bar brackets okay you can get them really cheap you can get them in multiple different configurations and you can get them for the size of tube you need and you can build all kinds of things off of them um i really love light bar brackets because they're way cheaper than buying purpose-built race car brackets okay so we've changed the layout of the wire uh this is our alternator wire right here uh, i've changed everything literally a dozen times just right here for it to be a pleasing to my eye now of course this is when the fender's off with the fender back on it's going to cover all that up and you won't see none of that really but uh i want it to be appealing if the front end's ever off and then photos or video or whatever i have to have my stuff appealing i just can't have stuff hid and sloppy like even if you don't see it i still want it decent um so they all run out of there like we showed uh the wires zip tied up nice and neat that comes off of our pastor right here so we've always had our hot and negatives right here that hasn't changed since i originally built the car that is one thing that i did once and never changed it um 
have changed the wire layout, but I've never actually changed the location. So then everything just pulls together uh, nice and neat. And like I said, I really like this bracket because you can wrap one around the heater hose and then one through the bracket to hold it up. Anyway, uh, we went ahead and cut this one long. So this one's gonna come around and I think this one's gonna dive straight down into that. Originally, I was gonna come off, you know, when I was thinking, I was thinking I was gonna come off at a 90 and go across, but now I was like, man, that is really tacky. Um, you know, coming off at a 90 and going across, you're going across your clear view. So you're making it hard to see in your clear view and then it's just tacky. So I was like, we could literally tuck it up underneath here like this, which is the plan is to follow uh, this. And then we'll come right here off of this uh, edge and it will just roll straight out and go straight down. I just kind of cut it a little bit long and just sat it there so I can get my layout. But that should look amazing. Of course, we have our Y fittings that will come off of here and then that will just dive straight into our Y almost something like that and get zip tied, uh, zip tied up here. So this thing, man, y'all, I'm so freaking excited about how this thing is coming out now. Like whenever you redo something and you learn, you know, you can just make such a better product if you'll just stop and take the time, you know, and redo it. You know, I've, I've spent almost a month now, I think on this redo and I'm just so freaking stoked uh, to get this thing back together and get it out. Like I'm to the point now, I just want to put the wheels back on it and just push it out and wash it and clean it uh, and take this thing to the track because um, I'm just so stoked about how it works. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. See, this is what I mean by I change things a million times until I'm perfectly happy. I was like, we can clear this thing perfectly fine without having to add anything if we stop trying to attach it to this rod and we just let it gradually flow through here. And so that will, that's what we did, has it where it just snakes right through there. And we're nowhere near that piece now. What that does is now instead of going in at a straight, this reason why I've had to order so many fittings, is now we can go in at about a 45. So we'll order a 45 fit for that, and the hose will be perfect. There won't be no sharp, uh, you know, curving it down like that or anything. It'll gradually sweep in there right at a 45, and we can keep it tucked nice and tight. Uh, towards that way and it will just flow beautifully all right so then when it comes inside the car we've got it where it comes down under the dash like that and then we got to zip tie all this stuff up um tucks nice and neat beside the bars right here okay and then it comes up around and then it goes down through the tin work underneath the car now originally i was going to run it up over there but then I was thinking about how we have to be careful because of the height. So um, wherever the highest point of this line at is where the air is going to go. So I'm pretty sure that the highest point of this line is going to be right here. This is a touch higher than the motor. We're going to make it higher. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the radiator fill cap here. So I'm going to put an inline radiator fill cap right here. And then hopefully we can get the water to push uh, like that. If we're filling it here and we turn on the pump, then it should pump, push it through, um, through the motor. It'll go in here, out, and it should push it through the motor and then push it um, uphill is my hope. And it should be able to fill the whole, the whole system. And then we just have to hope that it will stay um, primed and not have any issues. Uh, if it's filled to the max, uh, I think we'll be okay. But if we, if we end up having issues, we'll have to put this uh, water pump, we'll have to figure out a way to remote mount it in the back. Oh, there ain't no other way around it. But we're trying to avoid that. So when we come out back, um, it's going to go out the tin work and then up over these bars. So pretty decently tucked up way up there above where the axle can go. And then this will all get zip tied up tight like that the axle can't hit it um that high up and then it will just dive right into there i think with 120 degree fitting so that it curves down and then shoots it kind of up a little uh same thing with this one up here uh this is pretty much 120 degree fitting so it shoots it up a little to dive it uh up there and we'll zip tie it uh, to all these bars and the axle uh will never be able to hit it so that should work perfect um i really wanted to bring it in right there over to wheel well and then go down through there and out the side but uh like i said that puts that puts it about up here uh definitely way higher than the radiator way higher than the motor and so i feel like we would end up with the air pocket uh above the rear wheel 
and that might be hard to get out. I'm not sure with the electric pump, but uh, I'm not taking no chances. So that's why I just went ahead and went uh, straight through the tin work. All right, so got it put back together. Got the seat through back in, carpet tucked back in, fender back on. Um, man, this has been a lot. I don't know if y'all been following every videos, but we have made a lot of changes and hopefully I've showed you all the details of what's involved to make a lot of these changes. Like a lot of these things are just not as simple as you would think it would be. You know, it'd be like slap some uh, radiator lines in the back of the car, good to go. Um, if you want to make them look clean, like when you open the car up, you don't see the radiator lines at all now that the seat's in, the carpet's in. I mean, if you look behind the seat, you can see them. If you looked up underneath the dash, you'd be able to see them. But to hide stuff and make stuff work, man, it takes time. It takes time, but I love doing this. So uh, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Um, I will catch y'all on the next one. Uh, hopefully this week we will get in some parts and um, we will be able to start wrapping this thing up. Thanks, y'all.